Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Tech.com video, we're going to be discussing the Xbox 360 and PS3 and how they're comparing to the latest generation of mobile processors. So as some of you may know, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 hardware are becoming somewhat long in the tooth, and that's putting it very mildly and kindly. I'm going to give you a direct quote from Tony Tamasai, who is a senior vice president of the content and technology for NVIDIA. Now bear in mind, NVIDIA themselves created the... Um, hardware, or at least the graphics hardware in the PlayStation 3, and they did so for the original Xbox as well. And of course they also produced quite a lot of uh, hardware to say the least for the PC, the GeForce range. Anyway, onto the exact quote, the PS3 and Xbox 360 are barely more powerful than mobile devices. The next click of mobile phones will outperform them. Now in case you guys are wondering what he's actually referring to with the click, Right now, he's referring to the fact that the Tegra 4, which by the way is actually used in the upcoming Project Shield by NVIDIA, is getting close to the level of the PS3 and Xbox 360. However, the next click, in other words, the next release of the, say for example, in their case, the Tegra 5, will definitely outperform and outpace the PS3 and Xbox 360. So just how far behind is, for example, the Tegra 4? Well, the Tegra 4 is running at around 80 gigaflops. So now the PS3 and Xbox 360 are pushing around 200. So that's obviously quite a jump. It's definitely still out of range currently. But bear in mind the speed that this technology for mobiles is actually starting to move forward. For example, the Tegra 3, which obviously was the predecessor to 4, runs at around 12. So from 12 to 80. That's an absolute huge jump in performance. So if you were to take that and you were to imagine how much the next generation is going to bump this up. I mean, it doesn't have to do nowhere near the jump as previously. Even twice the performance of Tegra 4, so in other words from uh, 4 to 5, it's a roughly doubles, it's going to be very close to the generational performance of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. It's also worth remembering that in terms of the consoles that we're actually seeing right now, this is what I've been saying in a number of my videos for a while now. The Xbox 360 and PS3 are archaic. Their hardware is really holding back the gaming industry, which is one of the reasons that I, as a tech buff, you know, um, I really want the next generation of consoles to come out, as well as software developers. Because it's not like it just hurts us as gamers because we want the prettier graphics. It actually hurts developers as well because they actually have visions for their games. In other words, they may want to, say, have... Uh, this just create a very arbitrary scene. Let's say you are playing the next Call of Duty. And let's say, for example, a st just ignore the graphics just for a moment. But let me just paint a very rough picture in your head. Let's say that you are taking out, um, I don't know, a small encampment to your right, okay? And let's say to the left there's a war waging between, I don't know, artillery or whatever. And let's say in the very distance you could see a bridge. Now, in their vision, in the original vision they had for this, they might want this bridge to, say, be destroyed, okay? So, let's say there's a war that's happening. Let's say, you know, tanks are encroaching the line across this bridge, and I'm not very good with military terms. I've never been in the military, so excuse the, you know, noobness. But let's say that they're trying to encroach on the other side of the bridge, so in other words, the tanks are going across and firing pew pew pew. And then let's assume that, say, a bombing run happens, um, you know, missiles come across in the distance, and they want to fire rockets at this shit, at this um, platoon of tanks. And when they do so, it also takes out the bridge, because, you know, let's just assume that you are painting the target for this bridge, because, you know, without this bridge, the enemy can't invade whatever land they are trying to invade, right? You get the idea. But 
the thing is, with all of this happening at once, what starts happening is your process, the graphics card processor, uh, so the graphics processor and the CPU and whatever else, including RAM actually, it gets absolutely battered if your system is just not capable of doing it, therefore sacrifices have to be made. In this case, for example, we may see a simple reduction in the foreground and various other debris. We may see a overall reduction in, say, the scene quality. We may see lower enemy count or whatever. In other words, there may have to be a certain level of sacrifices to produce the graphical fidelity and the you know the awesome environments that we as gamers want to see. That's, however hypothesize that this is not the case on the PlayStation 4, or let's assume that this project has moved on to the PS4, Xbox 720, or natively for the PC, whatever makes you feel better, you know, your, your chosen next generation platform of choice. These certain levels of, um, let's go with sacrifice that the developers have to make, will not be there, okay? So, if we were to actually take a very brief comparison over the PS3 and Xbox 360, just for this, they are even, you know, I'm not going to split hairs over a few, you know, percent of performance from either system. If you were to take that, the PS4 has substantially more. The GPU of the PS4, I'm just going to round it up by a little bit, and let's just say it's got 1.8 T-flops. So that's a massive jump right there from 200 to 1.8. Um, and similarly, if you were to take a look at, say, a flagship GPU of, say, um, NVIDIA, which would be, ironically enough, of course, the company who are uh, mentioning this in to begin with, but let's say you take a look at the Titan, which has around 4.5 T-flops of computing power. And most other cards now, you're going to be looking at around 2 uh, flops plus. So, it's... <sighs> It's quite insane, you know, that you're looking at most cards now that like 2,500, for example, flops or 3,000 flops. And of course, you have the PS3 slash Xbox 360 at a fraction of that. So what are we going to actually be looking at on the next generation hardware? In other words, for mobile devices, not so much for... Um, those of us who uh, want to play it on the TV, but what about for those of us who want to have mobile gaming? Well, before we all get too excited over the prospect of having a cell phone that, say, in two years' time, that can play games of Xbox 360 quality, just for example, there are a number of concerns that you must remember. First of all, mobile handsets are small. Obviously, you know, the they're starting to become a little bit bigger now with, say, the Samsung S Galaxy 4. But generally speaking, they have to actually fit into your pocket, and they also have to be fairly, well, light. So despite the fact that there are improvements over battery life and these chips are becoming more power efficient, the bottom line is to have a device that runs at, for example, 200 G-flops is going to quickly eat at that battery. It's that simple. So it's going to be a long time before we start getting the power efficiency. And by a long time, I don't mean, you know, 10 years or something. But I'm saying, you know, a couple of years plus, maybe three, four, five years. Who knows? It obviously depends on just how much they can actually reduce the power consumption. Obviously, they are making big um, strides towards doing this now. But for other um, devices, say tablets and uh various other bits and pieces, say laptops, indeed even NVIDIA's own Shield, which they've already confirmed that will be upgraded each and every year with the latest Tegra chip, you're going to be seeing a very, very, very powerful hardware very quickly actually, it's going to become quite insane. Um, Obviously, we're not just talking about raw processing power, in other words, the, you know, the flops here. We're also talking about memory. The Xbox 360 and PS3, as I've mentioned dozens of times now, has extremely limited amounts of system RAM. Most cell phones now actually have far more memory than that. Even the Galaxy 2, which I've got, I'm waiting for my contract to end in a couple of months so I can get the, the latest one. Um, that actually has substantially more. I know it's under... A, gig, like 800 megabytes or around that number anyway, memory's uh, 
can't really remember to be honest, the specs of the phone, but something around that line. But still, it's certainly more than the PS3 and Xbox 360 have. So, in terms of actual applications, of course, there are a number of issues still with mobile devices. Predominantly downloading them, um, the games and so forth. Um, obviously, you can do so via Wi-Fi, but, you know, certainly not um, on a, say, I don't know, just a regular signal. The point being, though, is we are moving ever closer to a ridiculously powerful set of heads, um, handsets and tablets, of course, are starting to move forward quite quickly as well, especially now that APUs are starting to really filter through. NVIDIA are, of course, working on their own stuff, but so are AMD. Uh, the Fusion idea is actually aimed primarily, which at uh, mobile devices. The Jaguar, ironically, one of the primary uses for it, outside of consoles, will actually be for um, tablets and other low-power devices, which is one of the reasons that Sony originally chose it, because it really scales well with power usage. I'm not saying that we're going to be seeing devices as powerful as, say, the PS4 in the next couple of you know years um, on, say, tablets, but we are certainly going to be going towards that way. GPU and APU, and, or should I say APU integrations, which is of course an amal amalgamation of CPU and GPU, is certainly going to start making huge strides forward. Anyway, this has been a fairly short video for me, but I think it's um, been a bit of a fascinating insight, at least well, for the future. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and as usual, if you've got any comments or whatever, feel free to leave them below. As I've said a dozen times now, but just in case you've not watched my videos, if you're unsure or you want to message me, I do try to read all the comments, but it's a bit difficult, so you're probably best to either message me directly on YouTube, or Facebook would be even better, that would be facebook.com, of course, slash redgamingtech, or you can just check out the um, channel homepage, and we We've got links to it all there. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon. Take care, and bye for now.